and he's doing the part of the soil to match that with our physical health. Very, very interesting. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> very. And we have Cuidado Peligro, Cotabe, we have our main host here. Hey, DM, DM, everyone. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Claudio. Catabo. Hey, Henry. Am I saying that? Long I'm completely off. Can you repeat, Henry? It's Cotabe. Is that correct? Yes, Cotabe. Okay. That's right. DM, DM, everyone. Hey, Franco. Hey, well, uh, why not? While some other people start joining, we can start with an icebreaker. That I wanted to do uh, to make this a little bit more interactive from the very beginning. Um, and so, what I want to do is let's pass around the voice so that everyone uh, gets to talk a little bit. And we'll we'll say uh, how one thing or a change that we would like to see in the world in one in one question. Uh, but we, we we have to phrase it as a question. So, for example. Here is my question. I'll do it and then I'll pass it along. How can we fund open and public for good initiatives efficiently? That's my question. And I'll pass it to um, Umberto. Hey, can you repeat the question? How can we run public goods efficiently? Was that? Was it that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, open, open and uh easily available public goods efficiently that for good projects i think that was my question wait i'll tell you my question again <laughs> how can we fund open and public for good initiatives efficiently that's my question um and you don't have to answer you, you just have to make the, a, a, a question of the, an impact that you want to see in the world and then pass it along uh, well, it came to my mind that uh, budgets that are that are um, tagged or you know categorized for certain stuff. So, for example, um, when you buy, so in Germany, uh, this is an example from Germany. In Germany, uh, when you buy a dog or you adopt a dog, um, you need to pay a tax, and that tax is um, used to fund the places for people that are walking with their dogs and for places for dogs to be and also for the trash collecting and the bags. So uh, it is something that you are choosing to do, having a dog, and you are paying uh, a specific budget for in supporting that activity, let's say. So if we could have that in everything that we do, uh, each service will be improved in the same um, way that it is being used. So in Me Mexico, it happens something like that, but it does not actually happen. Just they collect you the tax, but the tax does not go to the thing. So when yeah. you pay, for example, for, um, the waste management that money does not go to waste management can go to everything else yeah i love it and i think label budgets are super important label, yeah. but what i want to do here is more um kind of like an icebreaker and have everyone to join in and participate and voice make their voice be heard but i don't want uh, to answer the question because I don't want to take too much time. I just want someone to make, like, every each person here make a question and then pass it along. Like, you don't have to answer. Just I want to see, like, what, what are you working on? It can be related to your project or it, it cannot. But what kind of things you want to change, what, want to see changing in the, in the world in general? 
So what will be your question, Humberto? And then pass it along. Okay, my question will be, um, how do you imagine a solar punk world? In, how do you imagine a solar punk um, neighborhood? Can I that you? Yes, absolutely. And then pass, uh, pass it along to someone I else to make to another question. Irtu. Hey, uh, hey everyone. Uh, Ritu here from Atlantis. It's nice to see a lot of uh, familiar faces here. Let me just uh, switch on my camera. Uh, yeah, so I think what you asked was about... Uh, can you repeat the question once again? How do you imagine a solar punk neighborhood? Solar punk neighborhood. Okay. But also, uh, you don't have to answer the question. The idea is more to have to collect the questions, to, to hear everyone's question about what the impact that they want to see. Just, just not to have to use too much time. I just want to hear questions around what what impact you want to see in the world. So you can make yeah. another question and then ask someone else. Yeah, I think it it would be great to uh, imagine how these uh, solar punk neighborhoods could look, and uh, definitely solar punk neighborhoods are going to have some impact. Uh, so my question would be, uh, uh, how can you uh, build more uh, transparency in impact projects? Uh, how, how do you essentially know which projects are doing the right kind of work? So that's my question, and I would uh, pass this on to... Nice, good question. Yeah. Uh, maybe Wasabi? I think he would have some interesting thoughts on that. Um, I just came in the room. I don't know what what we're talking about. Okay, so it's just an icebreaker. So we ask the next person who's going to speak a question, and then we pass on the mic to you. You can maybe answer it or also come up with another question for someone, one of us. So we just break the ice like that. Exactly. And uh, if you answer, just like make a very brief comment just not to use too much time, but the idea is more to, to, uh, to make questions about the impact that we want to see in the world. Yeah. So the question that I had for Wasabi was, uh, how do you think we can build better transparency in impact projects? Um, we need to have uh, like all of the information in one place. We, try, we need to try to use as less tools as possible. Um, the tools that we use, the we have the ability to create as many users as we want and the bill doesn't go to the roof. That's, that's how we need to organize it. Um, it's, it's gonna, the transparency is gonna be there because all of the information is gonna be in, that, in one place. So there is no, no need for question or, or doubts. So Wasabi, and you wanna make a question to them, pass, pass it along to someone? question related to um, impact. To impact, okay. So uh, how do we increase engagement? Like how do we keep people engaged? And like, uh, I believe that lack of engagement is a real problem. Um, no, not everyone is paying attention to this, to this one. And this is a, a huge problem because uh, I have seen uh, big organizations like that doesn't have those communities that are like participating or even talking in Discord, and that that's sad for me. And then pass, pass it along so that someone else can ask their question. Oh, I can't help you. Maybe uh, Ana Maria. Um, yeah, I, I, Anna should be a great to answer. Am I at all? Yes, we can hear you, Anna. Sorry, I am new in this. Uh, uh, my question would be, what do you think like we can learn from animals on how to be solar punks? Do you think they consider themselves solar punks? And you want to pass it? I would pass it to Henry. 
awesome. Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I like that. <laughs> Copy nature. Um, I think a good question would be, um, can you think about a utopic future and how exactly your day-to-day -day would be? The question, I think, would be, how can we strive to live that also in a way that would, through actions, encourage others to want to do the same? Uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Guido. Uh, yeah, uh, my question is how we can uh, um, connect more donation to good action. Okay, we can go more straight. And I'll pass it to Dan Hogg. Oops, I'm there. Um, all great questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I had some more. So my question would be: What, what are the most effective uh, things we could do to uh, reverse uh, the change of the climate and prevent the extreme, um, like tail ones that we have in, like the you know black swans in climate. And uh, yeah, I would like to pass over to uh, Epistet Technician. Um, all great questions as well, yeah. I think this is going to be great to like actually engage in a further conversation. Um, I would like to ask, uh, Maybe more specifically, how do we coordinate capital to finance the acquisition and development of uh, specifically community land trust? Because um, I think it is very important to think about how that will help organize um, our governance and economic systems in appropriate relation um, to our bioregions. So, yeah, I would just think about that. Uh, I'd pass it on to Topi. Hey, y'all. Good to see everyone here. Um, my question would be, how could we get everyone to kind of like follow like their passions and like, allow to like create community around that so like say like like i just want to be like a photographer like how could i use that uh like passion and contribute to like a new solar punk society say in the future and i'll pass it to the other kieran Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, hey there. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Great. I, I wasn't following the conversation much, but I was working on the site. So I'll just say hi to the whole group. Can I pass it on to someone else? Absolutely. And if you want, you can just make one question about um, an impact that you would like to see in the world. We're, we're just making questions about the impact that we would like to see in the world. Does anything come to mind? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So uh, more than just saying that, I just want to tell you all to just check out the Greenfield Festival. The registration is open, and I would like to see each one of you in real, if possible. Oh, and then just pass it along then. Um, post left. Okay, uh, Cloud. Pedro, there you go. Hey, um, my question would be what words um, should we then use and bring forward in order to speak compellingly about solar punk, public goods, etc.? Uh, 
Uh, and I pass it to Pedro. Sorry, Pedro. All good. Uh, hello, everyone. So, um, my question comes from the belief that solar, lunar, uh, many flavors of struggle of punk come from more participation and we're still inventing new ways of being together, of organizing, of coordinating. So my question is, how can we have a more learning-oriented governance? A more what? Or oriented governance? Learning-oriented governance. Right. Uh, a decision-making that is based on uh, getting to learn things. This is this is my question. Uh, it came from from the belief that that I shared. And let's hear from Wasabi. I don't know if they uh, spoke already. Wasabi already went, but Marco raised his hand. There you go. Yeah, let me take it. Um, I was thinking as um, there are all these new lifestyles that are popping out in the world. Uh, I can just name a couple of them, for example, the digital nomads, or now we're reinventing the solar punk nomads and other stuff. And this morning I was reading an article about how badly some of these lifestyles are perceived in some places. For example, this article was based in Lisboa, and they were saying that the digital nomads have many advantages and the local populations are not that happy with that. And my question is, how can we better harmonized with the local population and local culture, uh, all these new lifestyles that are totally uh, decentralized from, you know, the location point of view, because, you know, we are moving between different countries, etc. How can we make these new lifestyles, new, these new type of people and jobs more entertained and more like linked to the local culture and the local population? And just pass it along. I think it's only we only have uh, Real okay. Peligro yeah. and okay. Tiem Buga. So Franco, maybe you take it. Yeah, sure. Um, I didn't think of a question because I just came here and I wasn't very on topic, but. I, I'll repeat the question that we just said, like the, I was kind of thinking something like that, like how can this decentralization can help create better structures for a more sustainable world? And this, I don't know, the, the point that Marco Bear uh, brought was very interesting. So yeah, kind of in that sense. And yeah, back to you, Kotabe. Oh, sorry about the dog. It's not that close. <laughs> sorry about it. Um, I'll pass it to TM Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm fine, fine, I'm fine. Um, uh, a lot, lot of people, people have been, been talking, talking about, about um, regeneration, and basically that's what we as maybe solar uh, solar punk nomads or basically anybody within now the rarefi space is looking um, up to so my question would be along the lines of uh, how do we take advantage of uh, nature's intelligence and indigenous wisdom nice great awesome Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for engaging with me. Um, I, I think, think it's always fun to have fun and I like icebreaking and hear everyone, everyone a little bit and get everyone engaged. And then there's always like some lessons uh, to be run out of the uh, Like for example, at the beginning maybe it was a bit more clunky, the dynamic, and then I'm trying to understand it. And then at the end it was flowing very nicely. Or how uh, sometimes making questions harder than the immediate uh, Reflection of trying to answer them. Um, that's very interesting. And then it's also very interesting to know a little bit of what are the questions that are popping into your mind and um, 
what is what is the, the kind of world that you want to see. Um, I hear a lot of like solar phones or solar phone reading, and that that is really I mean I'm also really um, loving that. Uh, then a lot of the questions related to well a couple of questions related to how to emulate uh, nature based solutions or or nature um, wisdom and independent wisdom. Uh, which is also something very interesting. And then a lot of the coordination and engage uh, and government. I I think it's a bit of a the nice project that we have today. So I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, let's get into the topic. Um, so what we are going to talk here is about fundraising and especially uh here. Uh, getting in, getting your project together, uh, but before getting into um, get your project together, let's talk about um, what are the options and why would you want to get your project together. So um, sometimes I actually got this question. I, I, I didn't got this question, but what, with one person that I was uh, speaking with in the Solar Fund Hill, uh, he mentioned uh, we are thinking about creating a project on um, Indiegogo. Uh, but maybe give it will be a nice place to set the, this project into. Um, and so if I get the question of should I get my project into Bitcoin or Indiegogo or give it, what, what, what would you recommend? I will say yes. Because they all serve different purposes and they all have different strengths. Um, so one, like Bitcoin strength and you know it, very well. This, this group was mostly created around Bitcoin and having the matching pool uh, to be a source of funding that is already collected to be distributed by voting basically, it's very strong. And it's very strong both for the funders and for the project because the funders can see that the money that they're putting in is going to be multiplied and at least this last round, it was like almost one to one. Like, okay, it's going for like one million, and then almost one million was raised from the community, and so two million went to the to the project. Half of it went for retail from retail, and half of it went from more kind of like institutional donors, and that's very powerful. That's amazing, and shout out to Gitcoin for doing that. Um, I think it's a wonderful way to fund to fundraise for public good. Um, then if you, uh, for example, using Indiegogo or GoFundMe, um, it's great when you're tailoring for, um, people that are not crypto native, because let's admit it, like Bitcoin is, um, still quite hard for someone that doesn't have crypto to just get in on their wallet and then make a donation. Right, and give it to. Um, we are working on on having a fiat donation integration, but it's challenging. Um, it's challenging, especially when regulation is um, getting tighter. And what makes it more challenging is that uh, just banking the the credit cards are a lot rejecting the usual on ramping uh, side. So right now we actually have everything prepared to, to integrate uh, via donation again on give it, but we don't want to release it if we don't see that there is more than 60-70% um, of success because we don't want to give a bad UX to people that are trying to donate with fiat. And so Indiegogo or GoFundMe or similar platforms can be really good when you are um, going to a, a community or an audience that, that are not well treated. And then, give it is um, it's also a great tool, uh, especially when you're catering for your closest community, community and big donor. Because give it is the best deal for donors. Um, well, for donors in general, and why is that? Because we are rewarding those who give. So basically, when people donate and give it, uh, projects receive hundred percent of the funds. The crypto goes directly straight from the project, the donor's wallet to the project wallet. And then 
uh, donors receive up to 80% of their donation back on the gift token. And this is how on one side we are decentralizing and on the other side we're also um, rewarding giving. So it's kind of like a donation mining. Um, so if you if you have a donor that maybe wants to make a, a larger donation as long as uh, he might have something back, then give it away. Um, the good thing is that it's fairly easy to use all of them. Um, let me start sharing my screen. So basically, you can create, if you're, if you're ready, you can create a project to give us a template. That I shared with you this call. Uh, you can get your project onboarded in five minutes. Um, so let's see, just a little bit more about give it specifically. You hear me? You, you hear me okay, right? Yes. Thank you. Cool. Uh, awesome. So here is our documentation, um, and I can share the, the document also um, on the Discord. But basically, what it gives us give us is building a culture and economy that rewards and empowers those who give. So we want we want to to reward those who are giving. Those who are giving is not only the funder, because people are also giving to society people are giving to the planet and we want all those people to be rewarded and empowered um, we aim to radically transform how public goods are being funded uh, and shift from systems based on sacrifice to win-win situations where everyone involved gets everyone involved wins basically um, so this starts with with a direct crypto donation platform on ethereum for crowdfunding, but it goes beyond that. Uh, what we want to do is for funders to, to be co-creators of the project. For we want to uh, talking about engagement. We want to we want funders to feel part of the impact that the makers are doing. We want everything to be united. And I don't know if this starts to sound like a DAO to you, but that's our goal. Uh, we want to help transition uh, for good projects and nonprofits into DAOs that are um, like are creating their own regenerative economy. Um, so yeah, there is mission, vision, values. Um, so building our mission is to build a culture of giving that rewards and empowers those to give, to project the society and the world. I already mentioned that. And our vision is a place where giving is effortless. Like, and effortless means I don't even feel that giving is a sacrifice. Giving is something that I will also be rewarded for. And it can be financially, but it can also be more than financial. Or it can include finance, the financial part. And all around the world are rewarded for creating positive change. This is what we want to see. We want to see that everyone that is creating positive change is rewarded. Um, and our key values are decentralization, altruism, but an altruism that doesn't involve sacrifice and uh, community. So, if you want to know a little bit more about um, how to see nonprofits shifting into regenerative economy, here is um, a medium article that just was just released. Uh, 11 days ago about how to evolve nonprofits into a green economy. Um, I, so this is kind of like the end goal for given. And we are here for the long run. Um, you can start small, you can start with one project. Maybe you will start getting 
fund slowly. Um, but the whole idea is to build together, and this is experimental work, so um, we want to learn how to do this with you. Um, but we want to, to learn together how to, how to, how to uh, transit and how to make this work that we're going, doing around impact into something, into a regenerative economy um, that is powered by its community and that is rewarding its community as a whole, that is sustainable um, and that is growing um, as much as it needs to grow. Uh, so take a look at this if you're interested in it. Um, also, a lot of things are in the roadmap for 2023, so maybe this um, article might be of interest to you too. Uh, we want to help with GIFI, we want to help projects uh, generate a deal on their idle uh, fund, and we want to give a give savings account to people so that they automatically are giving. Uh, from their from their savings, part of the yield that they, they are gaining. We want to integrate quadratic funding uh, and then if NFTs. We want to launch our own NFTs and then we want to help uh, projects launch their own. Mm. So on that topic, one other thing that is kind of like core and fundamental to the things that we want to do is we want to be the entrance point for in real life projects, but they don't have to be in real life. They can also be digital, but any portable project to enter into the web free space and harness all the benefits that they, they have. And this is why uh, we want to work, or at least I want to work very close together with um, the Solar Fund Guild. And we are going to get into the demo just in a couple of minutes, just to make it very clear how the flows how the flows of value really are aimed to work on GiveUp. This is how it happens. It all starts with a zero fee donation, where the giver uh, makes a donation to the maker of impact, and the maker gets 100% of their donation. Um, the next step is that the, the givers are actually rewarded for it. So, from Giveth, we have this program that is going to run until 2026, um, basically the end of 2026, where the Giveth are rewarded with up to now it's 80% um, of their donation value back on, on Give Token. So if the giver donates $100 or say $1,000, uh, he might get up to $800 uh, back on the Give Token. Uh, and this is this is one of the tools that we want to use for engagement because what we want the giver to do next is like they could sell the token um, and recover some they can further donate it or what they can do and this is what we want to incentivize the, the kind of behavior that we want to incentivize so that we can work together they can um, get an APR by just taking it and locking it uh, if they take it they get an APR right? Right now it's about, I believe, um, what is it? I think 10%, a little bit more than 10%. But if they lock it, they can lock it up to one year and they can get like 5.2 times that. So it can be up to uh, 50 something percent. And if they do that, they get give power, which they can then put behind the, the project. And then these will give them um, additional benefits. All that is built, but what is not built yet, and this is kind of like the end goal, is that this give that they are putting behind the projects, we want it to be eventually a collateralized, a collateral, a collateral <laughs> um, for for the project's own token. We want projects to, we want to help projects um, become DAOs create their governance structure, uh, build a stronger community, and launch their own token. But launching the, the token, launching a token is not the hard part. The hard part 
is the, the launcher token for tokenomics makes sense and uh, who is who is strengthened um, or strong enough, especially for the low volatility, the, the high volatility that we will have at the beginning, and not to get dumped. And the collateral is a great way to doing that. And basically, we're building a system. We're already kind of like training or or helping givers uh, get used to having some give token and put it behind projects. And eventually, we want to have that as a collateral for the token so that they are investing <coughs> um, to bootstrap uh, projects that are purchased in, at the early beginning while they are becoming regenerative economy. So I know that was a mouthful and um, I just want to stop for one second before the demo and uh, hear if you have some questions about it, about the, the, the value flows. Cool. So, no questions? Then, uh, demo time. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I said the, the template. Um, does anyone want to volunteer to make the demonstration? Um, I know Henry can help us, but he said he already has a wallet uh, set up on Giver. And so it will be interesting also for someone that does not have a wallet set up on Giver and that we can do it live because then we'll see um, more things popping up there. And the full process. I already have my wallet in Giver. So I think like I, I remember that I created for that. I wanted to ask you like you have to be verified actually to get actually like funds right to get like donations. The project uh, no. be verified or something. No. You you don't need to be verified to get donations, and this is a great question. Basically, anyone can fundraise and give. Uh, that is. Uh, permissionless, open access. Um, as long as you create your project, you have your link. Uh, however, your project is not going to be listed until it's like uh, seen by the team. That is nothing that goes against the terms and conditions. Um, then the project will be listed and it will be searchable. Um, however, if you want uh, your donor to be rewarded with the gift token, then you need to verify your project. Uh, that, that's the the only step there for the verification. Uh, okay. I was confused a lot. Thank you. I actually have to leave a few minutes, but thank you for the thing. I appreciate it. I'm going to check the, uh, the locks. Thank you. And bye, guys. OK. Bye, Ana Maria. Um, okay, anyone else uh, would like to volunteer to get their project and give us? If not, maybe Henry, we can uh, go ahead and try it out with yours. It doesn't look like you have any takers. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay. Uh, would you like to share your screen? Sure. And then uh, if you guys have already uh, filled out the template, then you just can follow uh, what we're doing with Henry. Okay, can you see that? I can see. Perfect. All right. I'm going to be toggling back and forth between the windows, so you uh you lead the way and I'll uh I'll, I'll try to follow along. Absolutely. So the process is quite simple and clear. Uh basically, I hope 
but if, if you also have feedback, uh, let, let us know because we, we always want to improve. Um, this is the this is the website that you enter the homepage. Um, most of the time, you're just going to go directly here, uh, unless you're clicking a, a different link. And here, you just click on create a project if you want to create your own project. It works very similar to any other crowdfunding platform. The questions are pretty much the same, even that Bitcoin. Um, so we and here are some some guidelines and some some uh, general tips. Um, so clear project description, explain who the organization is and what will be the funds. That's very helpful. Um, you'll to have a unique custom banner. Uh, photo and have no violations of the covenant in terms of use um, to get listed. And then we really recommend to embed photos, to embed videos, um, or external links. So because it's always, uh, I don't know if you have seen the template, but in the template, um, we're just having some tips. And one of the tips is have like very concise information on the crowdfunding platform. And then, but have a link more, um, uh, more information because some people will be very interested to engage more and to understand more about the project. And then if you have an open source project, for example, on GitHub, then a link to the repository is also a good search. Um, so you can close it now. And then uh, you can go to your template and start filling this information. If you have the template, then this probably this won't take more than five minutes. Five ten touch. And thank you so much, Henry, for doing this. No, not at all. I'm I'm trying to follow along. It's breaking up just a tiny bit on my end, so I'm I'm sorry if I'm a slight delay for everybody. No worries at all. So I think uh, we'll do this. Uh. I'm going to put in like some just simple, uh, not going to be going completely full board on this just so for time. Yeah, and this is also one thing that I mean, Henry and I were discussing just before this call. Um, it's always better to to have it ready than perfect. And so you don't need to have like the full um, Amazing project already created with like you know fact check and peer reviewed by five people and everything perfect. Um, sometimes it's better just to have it ready to ship it, and then you can you can improve from there. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like that the whole time, right? Um, probably every time that you read it, you're going to want to tweak something, um, and then. As time passes, then we are not so much focusing on this. We have already achieved this. There is our new goal. Um, so that's always good. And also one thing that we recommend frequently is to have um, small milestones. Because just put yourself uh, in the position of a donor. Big, hairy goals are always very interesting. Like, I want to change the world and make it more inclusive and good. But also, um, big hairy goals do not tell you too much about the, the intervention. And so try to, try to uh, break it apart into milestones. And we want to do this by this time, and we need this amount of funds to do this. And then as people see that you are um, shipping and you are producing what you say that you're doing, uh, then, then this community starts trusting more and it's easier to get more donations. Okay, so um, Henry already put the name, then a short description. Then he shows um, five categories for impact. Um, what, uh, what, what comes next, Henry? Uh, okay. Okay, so Here's you can project. choose. Exactly. You can choose the location of your project. Um, you can also, uh, if it's if it's a project that has a global impact, 
you can click on the checkbox below there. Ooh. Then you can add an image for the project. Um, it's always better to have an, an image that is actually um, related to you and what you're doing. But if you're not ready for that, if you don't have it ready right now, you can also search some, some photos there. Okay, so image ready. And then the next thing that you need is just a water to receive the funds. What was the last thing you just said? The last thing that you need is a wallet to receive the funds. Okay. Um, and one, one uh, best practice that we give, uh, for example, if you use MetaMask, it's fairly easy to create a new wallet. And so uh, if you just open it and then there, there's a button that says, that says create wallet and then it's ready. And it's always a good practice to separate your private funds from the funds of a project or the funds of different projects, um, just for yourself and for the community. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And yeah, well, this is it, it, um, since the, the address has already been used for one project, then it does uh, specify, uh, give it as for, for you to, to have a different wallet. For the new project. Um, so I don't know, Henry, would okay. you like to create a new a new address? Do you use MetaMask or what do you use? I do use MetaMask. Um, I I would I was I like uh, doing that just when I n offline, <laughs> and so uh -huh. I, I I would rather not do that right now. Actually, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, so basically. <clears throat> Can you go down a little bit? Sure. Once that you have created the added, added where you will where will you receive the funds? You just have to publish it, and that's it. You will review it, um, make sure everything looks nice, and then you can just publish it. Uh, a couple of recommenda extra recommendations are: uh, first, you can get funds both on Ethereum mainnet and on Gnosis right now. Um, Gnosis has a great advantage that fees are um, negligible. And so it's great to have to have it in both. You can, on, you can also only have it on Ethereum mainnet. And there's people that are also probably going to donate on Ethereum because um, this is where actually mo more people are on Ethereum than Gnosis, of course. But it's great to have both. And we are also, and this you can read about this on the 2023 plan, but we are soon to launch um, on, this, in, on different um, blockchains. So probably you're going to be able to add a Polygon wallet later on. You're going to be able to add a Celo wallet later on. Um, I will see if other uh, the goal is to be on on most blockchains. Um, so there it is. Told you, it will be less than five less than ten minutes at least. Um, and I don't know. Uh, I think that I would like to have take the rest of the time for questions and answers. Q and A. One thing session. too, like you can also edit a lot of the information that you put in. I found like with the other account that I've created, you can add, you can go back and edit a lot of information. So if you're just trying to set up the idea, like I was just doing, and you get to a point where you're not uh, maybe able to move forward, or you're not a hundred percent sure, or don't have the full idea, uh, you know, sketched out all the way, you can put something to hold your place and open the project, and then you can go back and do small edits, which I thought was really nice. Exactly. Or maybe while uh, some questions are getting cooked on on your side, um, I can also tell you that. Oh, uh, please go ahead. Um, yeah, um, a very short question because we loaded the project this morning, and uh, I'm, I was asking to myself, why is not asking to link the social media network? 
Is that a process that you will do later when they verify your project or what's going that's, on? That, that's a great question, Guido. Thank you so much. Um, we're actually, uh, that's an, up an upgrade that we are working on currently. Uh, so right now, your social media is not visible in the project page. And we know this is not ideal. So you can add it on the description. Um, but uh, hopefully in this quarter or next quarter, um, you will be you will have uh, your own link to bring your community and a, a whole new tab for community. Yeah. And then Henry, I think, I think that you had also a question. Yeah, but could you explain a little bit behind uh, the, um, the only being able to choose five of the categories? Because some projects could be much more extensive, and if, uh, sometimes I feel like just the five yeah, options yeah. are like, I'm like, ah, oh, I just want a few more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, on the side of the donor, we want to make it. Um, easier to browse for some of the projects. Right now, they're like at the beginning of this call, there were 1,797 projects. And then sometimes there, it's hard to have visibility. Also as a project, it's hard to, hard to have visibility. And so we want to kind of like have some need so that if the project is looking for something more specific like um, space exploration innovation, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I heard the term yesterday and I really love it. Sea fight, like in fact related to the sea, to, to the ocean. And then you can also see that in a more specific way. Um, that's the reasoning behind it. But we're always open for uh, user feedback. We actually highly encourage user feedback. So um, DM me or just create a, an issue on our GitHub repo because we do read everything. And we actually, we, we really want a user feedback right now. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Dan. Dan Ho. Uh, thanks for actually a great explanation. Um, my, my question was the, the following, like when the project is uh, created and verified, I think the life starts and what is the your recommendation like for successful campaigning? Like what, what would you, you know, what, maybe you give some good examples of successful campaigns in the past. Like what should the project uh, owners should do to, to make it success? I think you're on mute. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that, was, that was a great question. Thank you. Thank you for um, asking that. Creating the project and getting it verified is the easiest part, right? It, it takes, once that you have all the information, create the project, it takes five minutes. Um, verify it takes 15, and then you have to just wait for the team to get it verified. In three weeks, it's the project is ready and verified and already ready to race. Um, but then comes the, the hard work, and um, you're already familiar with it as uh, it's going brand Uh You have to go to your community and you have to get funds. Like We want to help um, make this as easy as possible, um, but it's always going to be easier for you to, to get the funds yourself. So first recommendation will be Start with friends, family, and fans. Um, maybe some of them, they don't have crypto, but try to start with your own community. Um, so one thing that I have fundraised on crowdfunding platforms on Web2, and for example, there is a psychological factor of seeing just zero donations, right? Um, it's hard to be the first donor. And so try to have someone close to you make the first donation. And then, then people can say like, hey, other people are donating to this. It's more uh, secure 
other people are trusting in this too. So there are a lot of, of um, factors like that. But then you, you really have to start with your community. Where are you making the impact? And I mean, if it's people, people that, that are making, making the impact, impact or um, are willing to make the donation. And especially, what, and then you can come with the experience part. And then, and then, for example, if you are using GitHub, GitHub then you, you can, can try to strengthen why is it good to donate to GitHub. Well, if you donate to GitHub, it will get 100% of the funds, and you can get it up to 80% of the funds back. Even if people, people are not used to this, like it's crazy. I'm, I'm the, the project is getting money, and then I'm getting money back. Or uh, that's, I don't know, that's crazy, and that's amazing. Um, so I, I don't have a donation culture. Um, I live in Mexico, and I think most people in here don't have a donation culture. Um, in my family, sometimes making donations was seen as someone is going to take the money. Uh, and it's not going to reach to the final destination and so on and so forth. But uh, donating and give us the project that are, that has created, the, the person that created the project is the one that is getting the money directly. As long as you trust them, you know that the funds are getting there. And on the other side, it's not like I'm just giving money. I'm also like getting something back. And the project is getting 100% and I'm getting at least 50 back. So, oh, most of the time that we see, there there is edge cases when there when the there is there are donation rounds that are too large. Um, but yeah, that those will be my general recommendations. Um, I don't know. For for example, we have um, at least Humberto here that uh, is a seasoned fundraiser and he's going to talk about fundraising tomorrow too so i don't know if you want to pitch in on this question Humberto. Um, also really quick i do have to go so it was great to be here with everybody so have a wonderful day we'll all talk soon thank you henry oh, Joe. so what was the specific question about uh, fundraising uh once that you have created your project and it's verified what our tips and tricks to start getting donations. Uh, I think Give It is a um, fundraising platform for um, your core community. I haven't find many people uh, that have donated to us that I do not know, um, unless the people that it says anonymous when they donate then there, there is no form th that I can know who they are. But um, every other name that appears in my fundraising um, campaign, I know them. And even if I haven't asked them directly, they have uh, found it and donated. So this is, this is something that only happens with your core community. I do not ask them to donate and they donate. And they donate um, frequently, monthly, on a monthly basis. Um, and, and something that is to, to say about Giveth is that as they are incentivizing the, um, the use of the gift economy through the things that Kotabe was saying about the API, APY and, and stuff. So what it is happening is that these people that believe in what we are doing in Urbanica, they are donating their yield uh, of their gift economy, and that's what I am getting monthly. So um, the, I think the, the strategy here will be to find more people that are already in Give It and um, tell these people about your project on one side, and on the other side could be um, helping Give It onboard more people to use the gift economy so that these people benefit from from the give economy and their donations to our projects do not come directly from their budget but from the yield that they are earning by taking their their money there so this is a win-win for everybody people can uh, support projects while not let's say spending or while not uh, losing that money because their money will be kept in the uh, uh, staking uh, in the farms and only the yields will go to to our projects 
but this is something that, for example, as Solar Farm Guild, uh, we could think about to find ways to onboard more people into uh, Give it that are already um, onboarded in Gitcoin so that they find more value donating in Give it than in this than in Gitcoin because they are not spending that that money. Yeah, um, I, I so much echo that, like, especially the part of you have to start with your own community. Maybe at some point you can uh, go above and beyond. And um, I believe that with the work that you're doing, it's going to happen. Um, but you, you start there, you start in, the, in your own community. You have to communicate what are the benefits for them. And we have to. And we're trying to do that. We're trying to create more resources uh, for you to be able to share with with your users so that they understand um, what's in it for them to donate on Give It. Um, but I think we do have to start with your own community. Very much agree with that. Um, on on that topic of uh, what's in it for them. When when donating to give us, uh, oh yes, yeah, I, I love the uh, I did, I lost what I was what I wanted to to mention. Um, but also something very quick. Um, we actually are uh, aiming to work with Bitcoin, and we are picking up a partnership with them, and we still don't know how it will look like. But probably we're going to launch a matching uh, matching fund with them. Um, we might integrate passports um, at some point. We don't know if for all donations, probably not. But for a few donations, we might integrate passports as still on your system. And eventually, it will be great to have a shared registry of projects. So projects that can get onboarded on Give it can get onboarded on Bitcoin automatically or very easily. And um, projects that get on board with Bitcoin can get on board and give us in a similar fashion. So that's something that is also on the work. Yeah. Any other? Um, Question. I know that we just crossed the top of the hour. Um, a, a very short one. Uh, um, for a donor, there is no need of registration, correct? So just connect the wallet, you donate, you get out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as a donor, you, you, you just donate. It's very easy. Um, the, the flow, it has a lot. We're trying to maximize or minimize the amount of clicks that it will take for the donor to make a donation. And as long as they have um, cryptocurrency, it's going to be super easy. Yeah. Okay, then then if they want to register to have the give backs, uh, is another, then there is a registration process. But if I just want to donate, easy. Not even the, like the give backs are actually also, they don't need registration. Um, okay. Once that, that they make a donation to a verified project, they get the give backs by the end of the round, maybe one week after the end of the round. And um, we can, uh, in a different call, uh, go a little bit through through the flow of the give backs. But basically, mm -hmm. they go into the Give Economy website, and um, they can just harvest them there. Good. Uh, maybe now we work in the community, we try to onboard as many people as possible, so we can make like a Sorapangil club of uh, onboarded project, and then in a month we can go for another seminar and we go more in, into the details. So we need at least a month to onboard as many people as possible, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm happy to help. Uh everyone here we are trying to figure out about the best ways how we can help um projects and I, i'm really interested in the projects that are here on the solar punk field 
So if there's any specific feedback, you can always count on me, DM me, uh, and let's figure out how to make this, um, how to make fundraising more effective uh, for all of you. And if there's also like features that you would like to see on Giveth, um, we will love to know and we'll love to uh, bring it out in the community and then try to try to push them um, so that we incorporate them. I, I cannot promise like super soon, but at least we have them on the board and we'll try to do it ASAP. <laughs> Yeah, very good. I think if there are no other questions, we can close the seminar. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to say something uh, that tomorrow there is going to be a Giveth um, feedback session or something like that. And I'm going to participate there uh, talking about the rankings as uh, I haven't seen any value to uh, to my project, at least at, at the moment with the rankings. Um, and really? it will be this this uh, session. And also I participated in another session of feedback uh, for uh, improving the, the landing page of each project. And this, uh, the idea is to provide some additional features or tabs into the projects page so that we can have a more clear or clearer information and in a way that the donors uh, find the, the information of, uh, that is more, most valuable for them um, easier and that there is also ways for tracking the impact that each project uh, does. So yeah, so we will we'll be um sharing this once we have something that is more um uh, tangible like that, that the updates are more tangible and we could use that as some alpha for the guild community but yeah that's it thank you very much thanks Kotabi, for talking and for presenting this event thank you always happy to be here and um Let's keep push forward together. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning. Yeah. Have a nice. <laughs>